Well, now that you are going to be teaching English, you're expected to be uh, an expert in language and linguistics. And even though a lot of us haven't really studied linguistics a lot, we've just studied four languages and we've studied our own language and maybe some grammar uh, and maybe a linguistics course perhaps. But basically, uh, we, we become experts in what we teach, in this case, English. And for example, to start with uh, pronunciation, which is phonetics, the science of producing all these sounds with our tongue and the roof of our mouth and our, our voice. And we have to be able to explain how to, not just how to model these sounds, but how to explain uh, which parts of our mouth are making the sounds or stopping the air or causing vibrations and learning the IPA, all the, the symbols for all the different sounds. Since the English language, the English letters don't represent the sounds very clearly. And so we still teach pronunciation. Some teachers, you know, are getting away from pronunciation lessons. They feel that it's uh, too much just repetition, uh, drilling, calisthenics, you might say. But uh, students want, want to improve their pronunciation. They want to get rid of their accent. And so we still have pronunciation, definitely, uh, and definitely accent reduction as well, where we're just trying to kind of have a speech therapy where helping students pronounce things correctly. And students can work by themselves a lot still in what used to be more language laboratories, but now has become more computer laboratories with headphones, microphones, and voice analyzing software. Then there's grammar, of course, which is the syntax of the language. Um, most new English teachers are very intimidated about teaching grammar because we don't usually study grammar when we're uh, learning our first language that much. So we have to, over time, learn to uh, explain all the rules and present perfect and articles and uh, step by step. And students want that too. Uh, they want to understand the grammar and the rules and, of course, practice them so that, that they can see if they can actually use them. And over time, you know, we become more confident being able to teach the grammar of English. Some teachers, again, are getting away from uh, gra teaching grammar because they would rather teach writing and reading and speaking and listening and uh, the skills. But uh, we still a lot of grammar in our curriculum and just we feel it's still useful for students and they still want it. So for now, we're still teaching grammar. And then vocabulary, of course, the semantics, studying different words in context, you know, in the reading context, not, not just the word and the definition or the word and the dic in the dictionary, but obviously in readings, seeing how the word's actually used. But we have to learn the different forms, like the noun form and the verb form. And maybe, you know, other words that are similar uh, to that word, maybe idioms and expressions that that word's part of, collocations, which is a term to describe how uh, words are used in combination, usually with other sets of words. And through that, the student build it, builds this vocabulary up. And uh, then uh, we also have, we have um, the paralanguage, you know, where you have the intonation, uh, when you have sarcasm or anger in language, or uh, body language as well, which is part of paralanguage. Uh, the body language that we use to, uh, you know, help communicate. So it's not just words, but it's, it's the tone of voice, the volume, the speed, and the body language. So this is, you know, linguistics kind of in a nutshell and, and how it applies to the linguistics that, that we, we teach as, as ESL teachers.